Good day to you. God bless you. Say, welcome to the Shepherd's Chapel. Welcome to this family Bible study hour, the book of the, Apo the Acts of the Apostles, that new book today. The apostles means one sent forth. That's ones that God sends forth with what? His message, his word. And many might say, well, who was the, who was the writer of the book of Acts? Well, naturally, it's the word of God. But the man who wrote it, his signature is all over it. There are a minimum of 60 words used by Luke alone. Why? He was a medical doctor. And, and being a physician and a medical doctor, Luke used many medical terms in the Greek. So it's, it, it identifies him. Though his name is not mentioned, he utilizes the word we several times. That's Luke included. All right. So... Um, and also, we notice that as we start this act, the book of the Apostles, the Acts of the Apostles, it takes off where the book, the Gospel of Luke, leaves off. You know, the crucifixion, the trial, and <clears throat> the very words that he utilized in the book of Luke. <clears throat> Opening it, he, he, he utilizes here. The... Chapters 1 through 8 basically has to do with Peter and, um, and others as they would teach to Israel. And from 9 to the end, it's Paul's three-phase uh, or threefold ministry in chapter 9 when he is brought to, to God's service, brought to the knees actually to serve God. Paul, you might know... Paul, before he was converted to Christianity, was a fantastic scholar. He knew the Old Testament inside and out. He knew more languages than anyone. He spoke different languages more than anyone, meaning the Aramaic, the Greek. He was his. Um, he was um, knew the Hellenist quite well, which means the Greek-speaking Hebrews. Okay, and. Um, from, this would be from where Tim, Timothy would come, Timotheus, uh, the biblical name. So uh, quite, quite um, a, a book, these acts. It tells you how to act, in other words, how you should act. So as we find the organization of the church, let's, let's go with chapter 1, the great book of Acts, the Acts of the Apostles, and uh, we read the former um, treaties, have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach. Luke is always inclusive. He was probably the better educated of all the apostles um, in that he was a medical doctor and was well educated. And he tries to bring a clarity and a deeper understanding uh, this word Theopolis means a friend of God. Uh, I'm going to take you back to the beginning of Luke. You won't have it on the screen, but listen to verse 3 as he opens his gospel of Luke. It seemed good to me also, having had perfect understanding of all things from the very first, uh, Luke saying, I, I understood it. It was clear to me. Uh, to write unto thee in order, most excellent Theopolis, that thou mightest know the certainty of those things wherein thou hast been instructed. In other words, he takes more time, goes into more detail, and is more precise in his writings, Luke is. So therefore, that makes this book of Acts very interesting in that uh, Luke takes the time to bring in that clarity where a child can understand it if you just stick to the manuscripts. Okay, verse 2, back returning to the first chapter of the great book of Acts. Until the day in which he was taken up, after that, this would be Christ, after that he, through the Holy Spirit, had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen. He had what? He chose them. He went up he didn't say, we're going to have an altar call, like for you to come. He said, follow me. And they did. Okay. Well, they, were, they were predestined to be a part of God's plan. 
just as many people in this world today, though they have a little difficulty coming around, realize God has his hand upon them. He leads them, he guides them, he directs them. Verse 3, to whom also he showed himself alive. This is after the crucifixion. He showed himself alive after his passion, the crucifixion, by many infallible proofs being seen. That means of them 40 days. That they had a visual contact with him. They had oral contact with him, words of mouth, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. In other words, when Christ defeated death, when he rose from the dead, when he was resurrected, that is to say, then the kingdom of God was with us, has been with us, and always will be with us from now to the end. Uh, are you a part of it? You know, in knowing him, Christianity is not a religion. It's a reality. And our Father loves his children that love him enough to take the letter he has written us. Wrote it to you. Have you read it? You know, when you love someone and you send them a letter, how do you feel if they don't read it? Maybe they trash it. <laughs> you know. Or, or maybe they put it on a fireplace mantle and keep deaths, records of deaths and births in it. You know, that's all a family ever uses. Uh, that does not please God who loves his children. He sent the letter for our encouragement, our success. You want, you want to be successful? It's right here. You cannot hire better counsel than Almighty God. And he has an answer for everything. He gives you the conditions to everything. Hey, the rest of it's up to you as to whether you love him or whether you're just too busy for the kingdom of God, too busy for eternal life. That, that's your choice. It's your boat. You sail it. If it hits the rocks, don't blame anyone else. You're supposed to be the captain of your ship that keeps it safe and away from danger. Verse 4, And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, we have, uh, ye have heard me. Now, where, where, did they, where did they hear him? Where did they hear him say this? Well, it, it would be, uh, this same writer, Luke 24 and verse 49. And this is the words of Jesus at the close of the gospel of Luke. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem, Yaroshalem, that's the city of peace, okay, until ye be endued with power from on high, Re doing what? Receiving the Holy Spirit. Do you know where this comes from? It comes from Isaiah 44. You can teach the New Testament from the Old. For God is the same yesterday, He is today, and He will be forever. Man changes, seasons change, years change, earth ages change, eons that is to say. But God's Word never changes. So what He, he warned them even before the crucifixion or rather here in the gospel, that stay in Jerusalem until you receive the Holy Spirit. I know many of you will notice, rather than saying Holy Ghost, I'm using Holy Spirit, because that's what the Greek is, pneuma. Okay. The pneuma in the Greek can't really be translated spook. Okay. And, I, and we don't worship some spook or ghost. Pneuma... It's a Greek word that means um, the same as the Hebrew word ruach, which is spirit or wind. And you ride around in a car. What, what, do, what kind of tires do you have on it? Pneumatic tires. That means tires with air in them. So would you ride around in a car that had ghost tires on it? I don't think so. So therefore, don't get nervous when I read spook, ghost, as Holy Spirit for it is God's Spirit. 
All right. And that's what we're to wait for. It's our comforter. He advises us. As a matter of fact, in Romans chapter 8, verse 26, it says, you don't even know what to pray for. As one of God's elect sometimes. So the Spirit intercedes into your life if you're one of God's elect, if you're predestined, and moves you. You may not know why, but you will have the unction, and God will touch you and direct you. And what a fascinating time to serve the, the living God. Verse 5. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days hence. In other words, it was John that baptized in the river Jordan. And um, here very soon, God is going to immerse you in the Holy Spirit. And that spirit would come naturally on the 50th day. We're approaching the 40th. He will leave them on that 40th day, which is, what, what does 40 signify? Probation. Okay. But 10 days later, on the 50th day, do you know what 50th is in Greek? It's Pentecost. Pent, five, cost, 50. The 50th day after the resurrection, Pentecost they will receive that comforter, that Holy Spirit. Uh, and let's go with the next verse, verse 6. When they therefore were come together, and they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? Lord, is this going to be the end? Are you going to, are you going, when the Holy Spirit comes, is that going to be the end of everything? Uh, that's man's question always, okay. God lets us know the season, but nobody knows that day. Seven, and he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father has put in his own power. Verse eight, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Spirit is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem, that's that city of peace formed by the Jebusites, known originally as Jebus, a filthy city. And in all Judea and in Samaria, that's the ten tribes, and into the uttermost part of the earth, you're going to witness everywhere. That's why the dispersal took place. That's why God's word is, uh, and peoples are scattered. That's why you must always bloom where you're planted, letting God utilize you, planting that tender seed that changes lives. Uh, you know, it is true that you did not know the seasons or should not know the seasons, and yet as we near the end of this particular dispensation of time, it is written in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, just following the fourth chapter that gets the so-called flyaway doctrine to the era of mo many people, it says you don't have need for the seasons to know them because you can tell by what's happening. We be children of the light, day, not the night, and that we will see, know, and understand the season. And of course, we have been greatly blessed in that we know the generation of the fig tree that began in the year of our Lord, 1948, and time marches on. Those that have eyes to see and ears to hear do know and understand by the knowledge imparted by the Holy Spirit. Verse 9, And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. Now, do you know what was in that cloud that received him? You know, uh, I'm sure it was much like what received him then on the day that Ezekiel observed the highly polished bronze vehicle. That's what the color amber in Hebrew means and signifies in the manuscripts in Ezekiel chapter 1 verse 4. And though it couldn't be seen, he was received. And uh, um, if you don't understand that, put it on the shelf and leave it there a while. Verse 10. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, being the two angels. Okay. And they're standing there to instruct them. What did they say? 11. 
which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand you gazing up into heaven? Question. This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. Going to look just the same, going to be just the same, and quite frankly, it'll be the same geographical location that he will descend, that he will return to. Zechariah chapter 14 declares that on the Mount of Olives, his feet will touch the ground and it will split away across the great valley Kedron and right to the east gate and open away right into the city of Jerusalem, right into the very temple of the Lord, right through the east gate. Verse 12. Then returned they unto Jerusalem from the mount they called Olivet. In other words, he ascended from the Mount of Olives. And it is declared it is the Mount of Olives that his feet will touch at the second advent. Which is from Jerusalem a Sabbath day's journey. A Sabbath day's journey is about 2,000 English yards. Uh, almost half a mile. No, and no more. And that's, that's an old rule and, and so it is. Verse 13, and when they were come in, they went up into an upper room where abode both Peter and James and John and Andrew, Philip, Thomas, Bartholomew, and Matthew, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Simon Zelotus, that's to say the zealot, and Judas, the brother of James, had them all gathered in there in the upper room. 14. These all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brethren. They were there. This is the beginning of the church. This is the beginning of that meeting. Do you know how many people were there? Let's read it. 15. And in those days, Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples and said, the number of the names together were about 120. That's all there were in the Christian church at that time. About 120. And, and uh, Peter, of course, it was Peter that Jesus said, uh, do you know what Peter means? Uh, Cephas, I'll give it in two languages. It's rock. Okay. Jesus said, this is the rock on which I will build my church. And of course, Christ was the true rock. Uh, the Greek is an immovable rock. Cephas, or Peter, is movable or a chip off of that rock. And he is the entity that stood up and formed the first meeting, the first gathering. What transpired there? And um, this would be Christ's church. Verse 16, men and brethren, his this is words, this scripture must needs have been fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit by the mouth of David spake before concerning Judas, which was guide to them that took Jesus. Now, in other words, he betrayed Christ. And, and so it was. Well, who, where was this written? When was this written? Forewarned, forearranged. Well, it's really quite simple. It was in Psalms 41. We're going to turn there real quickly. You'll have it on the screen. Psalms 41, verses 9 and 10. Verse 9 reads, Yea, mine own familiar friend, in whom I trusted. Hey, he carried the money bag, Judas did. They trusted him with it. Which did eat of my bread, hath lifted up his heel against me. And so it is, he did. He, he, he um, uh, turned the Lord Jesus Christ, gave him the Judas kiss. Verse 10. But thou, O Lord, be merciful unto me and raise me up that I may requite them. In other words, the resurrection took care of that. Now, there is a strange thing about the death of, um, of Judas. 
it is written, and he repented and hanged himself. I could tell you he repented and they hanged him. Okay. Do you know why? It's pretty obvious. Um, history, for one thing, kind of indicates, but face reality. The word of God is real. Listen to it. Verse 17. And he was numbered with us and had obtained part of this ministry. He was the, he was the banker. Okay. And and uh, he was a part of it. But what, what is, this is a warning to you, beloved. You, in, in your organization, you want to be very careful who you allow in power. Okay. Verse 18. Now, this man purchased a field with the reward of iniquity, sin. And falling headlong, he burst asunder in the midst. And all his bowels gushed out. Now, in all of history, have you ever heard of a man hanging himself and then being split open from Adam's apple to below the belly button and his insides falling right out on the ground? That would be one awesome hanging. Okay. Now, he had lots of help. They could not afford, in as much as he betrayed them to the chief priest. And then they planned his death, his murder. They could not have this man running loose, especially now that he had repented and taken that 30 pieces of silver and threw it down on that floor where it would ring in that marble building. And that 30 pieces of silver would be gathered up. And just outside the potter's gate, that 30 pieces of silver would buy a plot, acres, a few acres, where old pottery was cast out, old pots, junk. But the meaning being that Christ's blood that was shed and, and paid that 30 pieces of silver is he who can take our broken lives when you're broken, when you're down, when you're out, and the human body is referred to as a pot in Ecclesiastes chapter 12 where it says when you get old and you're really kind of, you know, your teeth don't grind quite as well and all of your passions just kind of fly away, you know. And I don't know, that's when you get about 105. <laughs> and there you go. And, and, and the birds don't sing as loud as they used to, you know. He said, ere the pot break. That's your body and the silver cord part. Instantly, the spirit returns to the Father, but this flesh goes back to dirt. Okay, that's what it is. So, <clears throat> he has that potter's feel. His blood bought that. That he can put you back together. On forgiveness, he can give you hope. He can give you strength. He can give you guidance. Uh, that's what the price of that field bought us. 30 pieces of silver. Do you understand what that was the price of? A slave. And he did that for us. But Judas, in his iniquity, his sin, his greed, you know, he was very sorry when he saw, when he observed that he had brought about the death of Christ. He was shook. He thought Christ would call down a band of angels, that the kingdom would become at that moment, and he would have a money bag instead of a little thing like this, a tub, okay? And he would be the banker of the kingdom of God. And his greed, uh, or I, I would say it probably more vanity than greed, he wanted to be the head of collecting money, okay? And it sure went sour for him, but I do think that he repented. And I think when someone, I as a teacher of Christ's word, when someone repents and truly means it, I think they find forgiveness. So don't be judging Judas, okay? He had a lot of help and it was written after all. After all, did we not just read Psalms 41 and the verse 9 and 10? <clears throat> it was planned long, long ago. 
Then we can we continue on the next verse here in this 19. And it was known unto all the dwellers at Jerusalem, insomuch as that field is called in their proper tongue, Asel Duma, that is to say, the field of blood. And so it is, and so it is to this day, that field of blood. Why? The price of blood bought it. And here we have so much attention that is paid to Yaroshalam. Yaro coming from Yayin, that warming feel that the wine gives, and the peace, Shalom, that comes uh, when you know the real truth of the events that transpire there, this city of peace, which the Holy Spirit came to these ones. And has been with us ever since. And furthermore, always will be. Verse 20. For it is written in the book of Psalms, Let his habitation be desolate, and let no man dwell therein, and his bishopric let another take. And of course, we're quoting here from Psalm 6925, in Psalms 109.8, if you wish to make notes and make a side study, that's where it's written. We knew what would happen, and we knew from Psalms 22, I mean, Christ would be pierced, nailed to the cross, arms stretched from socket. <clears throat> it was prophecy coming to pass. And he did it for you. And a cell do me, this field of blood, is that blood that forgives sin, that is able to forgive sin, that washes it away. 21, wherefore of these men which have accompanied uh, with us all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, that, that is to say, we're going to replace him with somebody that has been here since Christ was with us. We don't want an apostle that's a Johnny come lately that has not visually seen and observed these events where he can be a true witness. 22, from where? From the beginning, from the baptism of John unto that same day that he was taken up from us, must one be ordained to be a witness with us of his resurrection. We've got to have, we've got to pick somebody that was present when John was baptized, when Christ went down into the water and John baptized him, and that voice came from on high. Do you remember what it said? <clears throat> this is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. Documenting from Almighty God that this was Emmanuel, the Son of God. And God was well pleased with this ministry as he would bring it forth as he would establish it. Uh, and those things written in Scripture, that they would come to pass exactly as they were written. Always has, always will. That's why you can count on the Word of God. It's like reading tomorrow's newspaper, whereby you know and understand. Man only fears the unknown. When you know what's transpiring, you always make arrangements to go over, around, or through according to which works best in the plan of God. So, who do they pick then? Verse 23. And they appointed two. Joseph, that Joseph meaning increase, called Barsabas, that's the son of rest, who was surnamed Justice, that means to be just, and Matthias. Matthias being Matthew in the Greek, and it means... Um, uh, gift of God. Okay, So who are they going to pick and how did they pick them? 24. And they prayed and said, Thou Lord, which knowest the hearts of all men. He's a heart knower. He knows even what you're thinking. Okay, uh, Showeth, uh, cardio knower is what the Greek manuscripts say. Wh show whither of these two men hast, thou hast chosen. Uh, 25, that he may take part of this ministry and apostleship from which Judas by transgression fell. 
that he might go to his own place. Tell us how that can be that uh, he can fill this place and, and so forth. 26 to complete the chapter. And they gave forth their lots. They cast lots. And the lot fell upon Matthias, and he was numbered with the 11 apostles. They were back up to full strength. They were back up to 12 again. And uh, governmental completeness. And so it was that that government was complete. I want to caution you. Leave judgment always to God. Don't you dare judge Judas. You do not know what transpired there. It's pretty obvious from reading the scripture. He did not commit suicide. Okay. He had a lot of help in finding his death, his passing. And he did repent. And so it is that our father... Uh, is in control. You know, there is a Greek word which means that he choked to death from grief, also hanged, uh, and uh, the circulation therefore cut off that the um, vascular system could not obtain um, the oxygen that it would need. But beside the point, we know the Kenites, we know their method of operation, and certainly um, Satan had done his little work the next man that takes sop is he. And Judas took that sop and gladly took it. And he paid the price. But at the same time, don't judge him. That's God's business. All right. Hey, don't miss the next lecture. You're going to learn of Pentecost. What did it really mean? What did they really say on Pentecost Day? That's what's important. All right. Bless your heart. You listen a moment, won't you please? Ezra and Nehemiah.